This is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, the latest and possibly greatest flight sim out today. With amazing graphics for our eyes to enjoy, and a 3D generated version of our world to explore, it feels like the makers of the sim wanted us to fly around in small bush planes to soak up the low altitude scenery. But I feel my old joystick needs an upgrade. After looking at a few new joysticks, they all seem similar in terms of overall design, with the short pivot length table mounted style. For sure, the quality of parts will be different, but I want something a bit more... This video is sponsored by KiwiCo. More about them later. I set about 3D printing some bearing mounts, which attach to some aluminium extrusions. I could then use 10mm shoulder bolts as the axles to remove any potential play. And the same could be done with the other axis to produce a two axis gimbal that will be the main mechanical pivot of the joystick. But how will this control a virtual aircraft in the simulator? First, we need to measure the angle of the joystick pivot, and one possibility is to use a potentiometer. Potentiometers work by connecting a positive and negative wire to these pins, which in this case supplies 5 volts. Then the third pin outputs a voltage between 0 and 5 volts, depending on the angle of the potentiometer shaft. But there is a problem with this. Because I want this joystick to hinge at the ground, the total rotation of the pivot isn't much before the joystick will hit my leg. In fact, it's only 6 degrees in either direction, and if I rotate this potentiometer by 12 degrees, the voltage change is less than half a volt, resulting in a very low measurement resolution. It seems the expensive joysticks use a magnetic technology, which uses something called a Hall Effect Sensor. Now I've used Hall Effect Sensors before to measure the exact angle of a motor, however the cost of the two sensors plus another for the rudder pedals will be more than what I paid for my old joystick. But then I realised I could use these tiny Hall Effect Sensors, which are a fifth of the cost. They work in a similar way to the potentiometer, where there are three pins. One for positive, one for negative, and one that outputs a voltage depending on the nearby magnetic field. So if you place it by a north pole of a magnet, it outputs zero volts. And if you place it by a south pole, it outputs five volts. The only issue with this is the north and south poles of a magnet are 180 degrees apart. So we'd only be using about 6% of the potential resolution. So instead, I'm going to use these cube magnets by mounting them slightly off center from the pivot with the north and south poles facing either side of the sensor. A small 12 degree rotation achieves the full north to south pole magnetic field change, resulting in a zero to five volt output resolution. Once the other axis was mounted, I soldered the wires to an Arduino micro to read the analog signals. Then using an Arduino joystick library and a few lines of code, the board can emulate a games controller and be set up to fly a plane. The next step was to add springs to the joystick so it will self-center, and these springs can be changed to achieve a desired resistive feel. I could then add an extension to the joystick to raise it up to my chair height, which has to be angled to avoid colliding with my chair when holding full up elevator. I decided to go with a basic cylindrical grip to resemble a classic bush plane control, but being 3D printed it can be swapped out for any other design. And the large red button can be assigned to a desired control output, which will most likely control the brake as Microsoft Flight Simulator doesn't currently support missiles. I then attached another aluminium extrusion to stand up vertically, which will be the mount for the throttle control as well as a few other switches. I decided to use a potentiometer for the throttle as the rotation range is much larger, so the resolution doesn't need to be as precise. This also meant it was very simple and compact to build, which fit nicely inside a small case. It might not be the most realistic looking throttle control, but it's very comfortable to use with just one hand, and I can toggle the switches easily too. The rudder pedals can then be attached to the same aluminium extrusion as the joystick, which prevents the controls from moving around on the floor, as well as making the distances between the controls adjustable. The two pedals were linked using these ball joint rods that are attached to another 3D printed part, which will eventually house the Hall Effect sensor. This means the rudder pedals move in opposite directions and have limited end stops to prevent over rotation. And I can add some springs so they always self center. Like the joystick, the foot pedals are again a basic cylindrical design with a long 5mm bolt down the center for added strength, but this can always be modified if needed. There's just one issue the pivot, which is supposed to house the Hall Effect sensor, rotates more than the 12 degrees of the joystick pivot, so it needs a slight modification. Instead of buying a different magnet or using a potentiometer, I realized that I can use a north and south pole of two separate magnets, and as long as they're not too far apart, the Hall Effect sensor will still output a linear value. 
All the switches and Hall Effect sensors can then be wired up to an Arduino board and mounted inside of a small 3D printed case to keep the setup neat. So I now have a custom homemade flight simulator joystick, complete with external throttle and rudder pedals. It's a slightly different design to a conventional joystick, but how does it perform in terms of precision, latency, adjustability, and also the cost? Because I'm using an Arduino Micro to read the analog signals from the sensors, the precision is ultimately limited by its input resolution, which is 1024 different values. This may seem like a high resolution for a 12 degree pivot, but some of the expensive joysticks boast resolutions over 16,000. Also, when comparing it to my old joystick, which apparently has a resolution of 256 different values, it's quite a bit more smooth. And because the magnetic field is linear throughout the joystick rotation, it essentially has zero dead band in the center, which I can't say the same for my old joystick. I then set up my high-speed camera at 1000 frames per second to film both the joystick and the 120 hertz monitor to measure the joystick's latency. This way I could measure the time from when I started to move the joystick to the moment the monitor started to update the position of this slider. After averaging the eight measurements, the measured latency was 111 milliseconds. However, after carrying the same test with my old joystick, its latency was 139 milliseconds which both seem pretty slow. So I also tried my mouse, which in the flight simulator menu had a latency of 89 milliseconds. So it's 28 milliseconds slower than my mouse, which I guess isn't bad for a joystick. And I've honestly never noticed any delay in the controls, even when flying the most aerobatic planes. I ultimately designed this setup for you guys to build at home, which is why everything uses these adjustable extrusions to make it customizable. But before building one of these yourself, I'm sure you want to know the cost. This whole setup cost me £212, which is expensive if you're just looking for a joystick and throttle. However, including rudder pedals, it makes it a lot cheaper as even some of the budget rudder pedals can cost you an extra £100. And sometimes it's fun to build your own stuff as you might learn something new. But if you're not going to build this joystick, how about building a crate from KiwiCo? I'm sure some of you were like me as a kid, where my favourite part of the science museum was browsing through the gift shop, dreaming of what project I could build next, which spurred my curiosity and ultimately led me to become an engineer. And now that KiwiCo provides that and more, it's an amazing opportunity for kids to learn something new. Their super cool hands-on projects are designed to expose kids to concepts in science, technology, engineering, art and math and are an excellent resource for learning at home. I'm always impressed by how well the crates are put together, as they require no extra supplies. Everything needed is already included, as well as a detailed magazine about the project. So once a project is built, it's easy to understand how it works. The crates are also an excellent gift option for the holidays, and a KiwiCo subscription will keep the fun and learning lasting all year long. So check out KiwiCo's excellent crates at kiwico.com forward slash tom50 for 50% off your first month of any crate, the link will be in the description down below. Thanks to KiwiCo for sponsoring this video and thank you very much for watching this video. Also, if you want to build this flight simulator setup, I have a video over on my second channel, which goes through all the electronics and all the code, as well as the 3D printer file so that you can build your own one at home. I'd like to thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, it'd be great if you could leave a thumbs up down below. If you're new to my channel and want to see other projects similar to this, then please click subscribe down below and a massive thank you to all of my supporters over on patreon.com for making these projects possible. I honestly couldn't do it without your support, so thanks once again. Thanks once again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.